So, Smarty Pants, are you ready for some detective work? Great, because I happen to have some right here. Gee, what a coincidence. Let's go! You drop a bowling ball in a bucket of water which is 45 degrees Fahrenheit. And you also drop another ball of the same weight, mass, and size in a bucket at 30 degrees Fahrenheit. If you do it at the same time, which ball will hit the bottom of the bucket first? The ball in the bucket of the 45-degree water will hit the bottom of the bucket later than the other ball. Did you think that the water had to be frozen at 30 degrees Fahrenheit? But the riddle says nothing about that bucket having anything in it. Therefore, there is no water or ice to slow the ball down. Sam is talking to his lawyer in jail. They're very upset because the judge has refused to grant bail. At the end of the conversation, Sam is allowed to leave the jail. Why? Sam is visiting his lawyer, who was arrested in jail. Hmm, time to look for another lawyer. Mary is the owner of a bag store. One day, a young woman came in. She wanted to buy a bag. After choosing the one she liked, she asked Mary how much it was. The price was $30. The girl asked Mary to sell it for $20, and the store owner agreed. The girl gave her $50. Mary didn't have any change, so she went to her friend who worked nearby to change the bill. The friend gave Mary two $20 bills and one $10 bill. The woman gave the customer $30 and put the remaining $20 in the cash register. Just a few minutes after the buyer left, Mary's friend rushed into the store. The bill you gave me is fake. I need my money back. Mary gave her friend her own $50. How much money did the store owner lose in total? For one thing, Mary sold the bag at a $10 discount, so she already lost this money. Then she gave the girl $30 in change and she had to return $50 to her friend for the fake bill. One $20 bill was the one her friend had given her, so she had to add $30 of her own. In total, she lost $70. Wow, next time use a credit card, huh? Private detective Deborah was doing some shopping at the mall. Suddenly, she heard people arguing. The woman went there and saw a stressed shop assistant and several people crowding him. The poor man had found a smartphone and made an announcement. And now, several people claimed it was their phone. One man said the phone must have slipped out of his bag. A young woman said the gadget belonged to her. And an older woman shouted it was her husband's device. That's when the phone rang. For some reason, the shop assistant handed it to Deborah. The woman glanced at the screen and immediately gave the phone to the man. How did she understand whose device it was? Deborah saw the word wife written on the screen. Jenny heard about a private party which was supposed to be VIP. Celebrities and influencers were going to attend it. And guess what? Thanks to one of her friends, Jenny managed to get on the guest list. Before the party, the girl bought a new dress and a pretty and expensive purse. At the party, Jenny got acquainted with a very nice young man called David. They were talking when someone pushed Jenny. She didn't fall over only thanks to David's fast reaction. But she noticed that her purse was gone. David rushed to catch the thief. He spotted a guy hanging around the entrance. What are you doing here? The man answered that he was looking for an ATM. He needed cash to buy a ticket for the party. David told the man to hand Jenny's purse over or he would call the police. How did he understand the man was the thief? This is an A-list event. You can't just buy a ticket to get there. This man is lying. The faster you run, the harder it is to catch this thing. What is it?
It's your breath. Brandon's wife told him to cook several eggs, but the man had to boil them for exactly two minutes. She left her husband three hourglass timers for three, four, and five minutes. How can the man boil the eggs for exactly two minutes? Brandon waited until the water started to boil. Then he turned over the 3 and 5 minute timers. When the 3 minute timer ran out, he dropped the eggs into the water. And when the 5 minute timer ran out, he had his perfectly boiled eggs. Sometimes I am loved, usually by the young. Other times I am dreaded, mostly by the old ones. I'm hard to remember, also hard to forget. And yet, if you do, you'll make someone upset. I occur every day. Everyone has to face me. Even if you don't want it to happen, embrace me. What am I? A birthday. It's thin, but when water splashes it, none seeps through. When hit, it changes color. It covers an incredibly complex thing, yet it's very easy to flex. What is it? It's human skin. Look at these people. Can you figure out which one is a smuggler? It's the woman on the left. The lady on this right is really pregnant. She's just wearing a wig. But the shape of the belly of the woman on the left is weird, to say the least. One of these people stole some Pringles. Can you figure out who it was? It's this young lady. Look at her ponytail. A very strange shape. Doesn't it resemble a pack of Pringles? Now, I've got this group of people for you. One of them is a vampire. Can you figure out who it is? It's this guy sitting on the right. Have you noticed that he has no shadow? A farmer is traveling with a fox, a sheep, and a small sack of hay. He comes to a river. There's a small boat near the shore. The boat can only support the farmer and one other animal or item. If the farmer leaves the fox alone with the sheep, the fox will eat the sheep. And if the farmer leaves the sheep alone with the hay, the sheep will eat the hay. How can the farmer get all three, as well as himself, safely across the river? The farmer should take the sheep across the river. Then he should paddle back. Then he will take the fox across the river. After that, the farmer should take the sheep back to the first side of the river. Then the farmer should leave the sheep on the first side of the river and take the hay to the other side, because it's safe to leave the hay with the fox. The farmer will then return to the first side of the river and pick up the sheep. The morning after a heavy snowfall, Justin went outside and saw there was twice as much snow on the top of his garage as there was on his neighbor's. Still, Justin didn't get surprised or upset. He just smiled and continued walking. Why? Justin's garage is twice as big as his neighbor's. No wonder it has twice as much snow. Andrew and Gary are twins. They were born just one minute apart. And Andrew is the elder of the two. But for some mysterious reason, they celebrate their birthdays two days apart once every several years. How is this possible? Andrew was born at 11.59 p.m. 
on February 28th. It wasn't a leap year. So Gary, who appeared just one minute later, was already born on March 1st. That's why, during leap years, they have two days between their birthdays. Look at these mirrors and say which one is magical. It's the one the girl in the middle is holding. Apparently, it helped her to get rid of her mole. Two men are playing chess. They've already played five games, and each man has won three of them. How is it possible? The men are playing with different opponents, not with each other. Marjorie owns a farm. There are six apple trees and seven lemon trees on her land. Each apple tree has 12 fruits, and each lemon tree has 10 fruits. How many oranges are there in total? Zero. We didn't say that Marjorie has any orange trees. Marjorie inserts her diamond ring in a glass bottle and closes it with the help of a cork. Then she takes the ring out of the bottle without taking out the cork or breaking the bottle. Can you guess how she did it? Easy! She pushed the cork inside the bottle and then took out the ring. Marjorie lost her smartwatch somewhere in the fields. She uses her phone to detect the current location of her gadget. The phone draws three possible routes, but only one of them will actually take her to the smartwatch. Can you help Marjorie choose the right way? Route A is correct. Early in the morning, Marjorie enters one of the farm's barns. Oh no! Someone broke all the bottles with cherry juice! She asks her three workers to clean up the mess. Meanwhile, she interrogates them. Who did it? Marjorie asks. Frank replies, uh, Yesterday in the afternoon, I put all the cherry juice bottles on the shelves and left home. I don't know what happened. Phil says, I didn't feel well last night, so I didn't touch the juice, and I went to bed early. And Anna says, Yesterday, I painted the fence all day. I didn't even enter the barn. Who's lying? Anna. She said she painted the fence, but it doesn't look freshly painted at all. After a long working day, Marjorie wants to relax and goes to the public swimming pool. She spots something really weird in the shower. One of these ladies is not from this planet. Can you guess who? The third lady. She's using ketchup to wash her hair instead of shampoo. Marjorie meets her three best friends by the pool, Megan, Sarah, and Raven. One of them gave birth to triplets four years ago. Can you guess who exactly? Raven. Take a look at her hands. She's wearing three DIY bracelets with the word mom. The triplets are now four years old, and her jewelry looks like something that they could have crafted. Marjorie and her besties go to a concert. But only one of these people is a real musician. Can you guess who? It's the second guy. The first lady put her sheet music upside down. After the concert, Marjorie takes a walk down the local street. There are 100 houses numbered from 1 to 100 on the street. Can you count how many times they use the digit 9 to number all the houses?
The correct answer is 19. The mystery can be solved using simple math. The digit 9 should occur in the following numbers. All we need to do is to count the number of 9s in this sequence. Marjorie comes home late at night and sees something creepy in her living room. Can you see it too? There are three ghosts in this room. What about the warehouse? Can you spot any ghosts here? Hello? Let's take a look at the bedroom. Ooh, there are five ghosts. Can someone call Ghostbusters? The next morning, Marjorie goes picking apples on her farm. Suddenly, someone spills cherry juice on her head. She noticed that someone climbed on a tree to pull that prank. But she didn't see this person's face. So Marjorie interrogates three people working on the farm that day. Frank says, I was watering vegetables far away from the apple trees. Phil says, I was in the kitchen preparing ingredients for the lemon jam production, just like you asked me. And Nina says, I was in the garden picking lemons for the jam. Marjorie figures out who did it right away. What about you? It was Phil. He tore his shirt, and a piece of fabric got stuck on the branch of an apple tree. A group of tourists arrives at the farm, and Marjorie gives them a fun tour. Unfortunately, one of these guests is a thief. Can you guess who? This lady. She's sneaking cash from another person's purse. It's raining heavily all day, so Marjorie stays home alone and fries pancakes in the kitchen. Suddenly, she realizes that she had forgotten to switch off the TV in the living room and goes there. In a minute, Marjorie returns to the kitchen and gets speechless. Why? Can you guess? When Marjorie left the kitchen, one prepared pancake was on the dish. But now it's gone. All the windows are locked. So who did it? Suddenly, Marjorie hears weird sounds from the basement. She goes there and finds the thieves. A family of raccoons broke into her house and sneaked the pancake. Can you count the exact number of animals in the basement? The task was to count the number of all animals. So the correct answer is 7. There are 4 raccoons, 1 cat, and 2 rats. The next day, Marjorie goes into her sunflower field to check how the flowers are doing. Can you spot what's odd here? There's a socket built into the ground. Marjorie goes to Megan's birthday party. One of the guests has the number 2 written on his forehead, and the other has 3. Megan offers everyone a game. All three of you have a number on your forehead. The number on one of your foreheads is the sum of the other numbers. All the numbers are unique. Now, you can't talk to each other. If you guess your number correctly, you won't have to wash dishes. So, can you guess Marjorie's number? It could either be 1 or 5, but if her number was 1, the guy with 3 would see that and guess his own number. Therefore, Marjorie has the number 5 on her forehead. The next day, Marjorie enters the farm's main barn. It's time to plant flowers in larger pots. She takes off her diamond ring to protect it from dirt. Marjorie puts it on the table. 
The process is almost finished, but suddenly Marjorie's phone rings and she leaves the barn to answer the call. After a while, she comes back and sees that the ring is missing. There are only three people on the farm today, Frank, Nina, and Megan. So Marjorie says, one of you has taken my ring. What were you doing when I left the barn? Frank replies, I was in the bathroom washing pumpkins with Nina. Nina replies, yes, we were washing the vegetables. And Megan says, I was just taking selfies with pumpkins. Who took the ring? Look at this bird cage. It was open. The canary bird flew out and took the ring. There are three sets of lab equipment on Marjorie's table. Can you sort the odd one out? This one doesn't have a flame. Marjorie throws a harvest festival at her farm. Her friends and co-workers chill all together. Can you spot any zombies among them? This dancer in the bushes doesn't look alive. As evening came, bright stars and a new moon showed up in the sky. Now Marjorie has to choose one of these three tunnels to escape. There's a family of creepy werewolves hanging out inside the first tunnel. The second tunnel is a home for mutant bats. They feed on humans and stay awake 24-7. And there is an unknown monster hiding in the third tunnel. Unknown because no one had ever returned from there alive to tell. Which tunnel is more or less safe to enter? Marjorie should choose the first tunnel. It's a new moon, so the werewolves are not dangerous yet. Jim goes hiking and gets lost in the woods. After a while, he gets really hungry. Jim wanders around and finds these three options, but only one of them is safe. Can you help Jim make the right choice? All the footsteps are leading to this berry bush, but not a single animal walked away from it. So the berries are probably poisonous. There's a scorpion creeping around these delicious bananas, so Jim should choose the apple tree. Timmy is packing bags for a hike in the mountains. Can you sort out extra items? It's unlikely he's going to need a hairdryer. Timmy's already taking a flashlight, and he probably won't have access to electricity. Therefore, he doesn't need this table lamp. And finally, he shouldn't take this heavy silver cutlery. A frog is at the bottom of a well. The well is 30 feet deep. The frog climbs up 5 feet every day, but it slips back 4 feet every night. After how many days will the frog be free? Twenty-six days. Wow! The frog climbs up by just one foot per 24 hours. So in 25 days, it will be at the level of 25 feet. And on the 26th day, it will make the final 5 feet jump and get out of the well. Billy here wakes up in a creepy cave and finds four tunnels leading outside. He only has one chance to escape. There's a hungry tiger inside the first tunnel. The second tunnel is filled with dust and spider webs. Yuck! There's a water-filled tank with sharks inside the third tunnel. And the fourth tunnel is full of venomous snakes. Uh Which tunnel is more or less safe to enter? Billy should choose the second tunnel. There are no spiders in this picture, only the webs. Crawling through them might be unpleasant, But at least he'll stay safe. Three tourists go hiking and get into trouble. Surprise, surprise! Can you guess who has more chances to survive?
the third person. Although rats are gross, they're not fatal. Diana's boat was wrecked, and she ended up on a tropical island. The locals speak an unknown language, so Diana can't understand them. But still, she managed to spot this guy's wife right away. Can you see her too? It's the third lady. They have similar tattoos. Wendy is walking in the woods and falls into the trap of evil elves. She offers their king a deal. If I write your exact age on a piece of paper, you'll let me go. The king agrees and gives Wendy a piece of paper and a pen. In a minute, he lets her go. How did she do it? Wendy literally did what she said. She wrote your exact age on the paper. Ah, clever girl. Stan is walking home in a haunted city. He finds a nice spot to shoot a TikTok. But unfortunately, he falls into a basement. Stan looks around and finds four doors out. There's a hungry dragon behind the first door. The second way is filled with intense fire. There's a desert filled with hungry piranhas behind the third door. And venomous snakes are waiting behind the fourth door. Which way is the Uh safest? The third one. Piranhas live in water, so they wouldn't manage to survive in the desert. Therefore, they're not dangerous for Stan. Jessica gets lost in the desert with just one small bottle of water. She has no clue where the nearest water source is. What would you suggest? Run as quickly as possible to find more water? Pour all water on her head to avoid sunstroke? Find a shady place and rest? Stay where she is and shout for help as loud as possible. The third option is the best. When it gets darker and cooler, she can walk further and find help. Tilda is boarding a private jet. The crew greets her, and she spots an imposter among the crew members right away. Can you see this person too? The pilot is wearing a badge with a female face and name on it. Therefore, he had stolen someone else's ID. Tyler wakes up in the morning and finds out that his shadow is gone. Uh He goes to the local witch. She offers to choose from these six options. But only one of these shadows really belongs to Tyler. Can you spot which one? Only the first shadow fits perfectly. Nina and Sarah are both fond of swimming. But one of them is making a big mistake. Can you guess who? Nina. The sign says that the water in this river contains toxic waste. Meanwhile, Sarah can easily surf in large waves. Kyle and Betty go to a remote village to spend a romantic weekend. They see a cute little farm on the way and buy some pomegranates. They go on a picnic and enjoy the fruits. Each of them eats half of the pomegranate. In 10 minutes, Kyle gets very sick. Betty takes him to the hospital. Doctors check everything and come to the conclusion the pomegranate was poisoned. Kyle and Betty ate the same food and drank the same drinks all day. How is it possible that Betty still feels well? The poison was in the white seeds. Kyle ate them whole, while Betty only the red part. Allison is jogging in a park. Suddenly, she comes across an angry brown bear. It's getting closer and closer, but Allison manages to survive. What did she do? Started running as fast as she could? Fell to the ground and pretended to be unconscious? Or stood still and didn't move? What do you say? You 
Usually, brown bears only attack people when they're surprised or feel threatened. Allison fell to the ground, and the bear didn't consider her dangerous. Peter is hiking in the middle of nowhere. Suddenly, he sees a mountain tiger in the distance. He's trying not to panic and begins to look for a place to hide. There are three possible options, but only one of them is more or less safe. Can you help him make the right choice? If Peter climbs this tree, the tiger can easily get him there. Tigers actually like to swim. That's why it's not safe for Peter to escape by boat. But if he hides in this cave and blocks the entrance with a stone, he can call rescuers and wait for evacuation. Alice is 45 years older than her son Tom. Both of their ages contain prime numbers as the digits. Also, Alice's age is the reverse of Tom's age. Can you figure out their ages? The only single-digit prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, and 7. Here's a list of possible age combinations. 32 and 23, 52 and 25, 73 and 37, 53 and 35, 75 and 57, 72 and 27. But only the last combination meets the first requirement. The age difference should be 45 years. Therefore, Alice is 72 and her son is 27. Polly is an archaeologist. She excavates an ancient city. Suddenly, she finds a beautiful antique vase, or vase if you prefer. But one piece is missing. Polly also finds these ceramic fragments. Can you help her find the missing piece of the vase? The fourth fragment fits perfectly. Dan lands with a parachute in a field in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Been there, done that. He finds the nearest bus station to get back to the city. But only one of these four buses will arrive at the station. Can you guess which one? It's the second bus. You can crack this maze much easier if you start drawing from the final destination. Amy leaves her workplace to go to the bathroom. She returns and finds out that someone had stolen all the cash from her wallet. Amy checks the wallet surface for fingerprints, but she only finds her own. The next day, Amy questions three of her co-workers. Mike says, Sorry, I've been out for lunch when the robbery took place. Oliver says, I've been feeling sick all morning, so I went home early. And Will says, I've been having a conference call with their clients. Can you spot the thief? It's Oliver. Take a look at his trash bin. He used gloves to steal the cash and then left them in the trash. He's the clumsy culprit. Julie worked in a Prada store in New York. Everything there was expensive, and most clients paid by credit card. But one day, she got a client who got a purse, a wallet, and a dress. All that cost her $3,990. But the woman decided to pay in cash. Julie refused to sell the items to the client and called the police. Why? tried to use to pay. They are two $2,000 bills, which don't exist. The police of Atlanta were notified that a prisoner had escaped from Chicago and taken the plane to Atlanta. Of course, an officer was sent to the airport to find the prisoner and capture them. The police officer spotted three people who looked similar to the criminal. Take a look at the passengers. Which one should be arrested? The prisoner must be this guy. He's the only one who doesn't have any luggage with him. Probably because he was running away and had none. 
In a small town, a grand robbery happened. Someone robbed a jewelry store in the local mall. At 6.03 p.m., the lights in the whole mall went off for 8 minutes. When the lights came back on, the most expensive jewelry pieces were missing from the shelves. The police interrogated three main suspects. Jack said, I was picking out a present for my son in an electronics store when the lights went off. I was so confused as anyone else. Fred said, I wasn't even in the mall at the time. I have no idea what you're talking about. And Stacy said, I was in the bathroom fixing my makeup. I didn't even notice the lights went out. Who is the main suspect? It's Stacy. She said that she hadn't noticed that the light had gone out, but they went off everywhere, including the bathrooms. She would have noticed it, so she's lying. Ava has always wanted to get a cat, but her mom wouldn't allow her to have a pet. So, when one day she found a kitten on the street, she brought it home, but kept it a secret. She succeeded for two weeks, but one morning, she went down to the kitchen. Have you been hiding a cat in your room? Her mother asked. How did she figure it out? Ava is wearing shorts. Her legs are all scratched, and these scratches are what gave her away. During Halloween, all kinds of creatures flooded a little town, blending in with the citizens. Weeks passed, but some of them stayed, pretending to be humans. The town's detective could catch the remaining ones. He's been tracking a vampire, and he has three suspects. All of them only come out at night. Which one of them is the vampire? This guy is pale, but it doesn't necessarily mean that he's a vampire. This guy is wearing a silver chain, so he can't be one. But this guy doesn't have a reflection. This is definitely not a human. Ned works in a club, and his job is to check people's ID cards and not let inside any suspicious people or people below the age of 21. Take a look at these three ID cards and figure out who isn't supposed to enter the club. Okay, here's the first guest for you. What can you say about this man? Don't let him in. The person in the photo is totally different. It's not this guy's ID card. Okay, here's the next one. Keep your eyes wide open. Do you see anything suspicious? She seems fine. Let her in. Okay, the next one. Check it out and make your decision. In or out? Las Vegas is written with a W. It's a typo, which is unacceptable for official documents. This ID must be fake. Here's the next guest for you to examine. What's your verdict? Will you let her in? She seems fine to me. It must be safe to let her in. What about this girl? Is anything off here? She seems fine to me too. Green light. Okay, the last guest. In or out? Look, the woman in the photo has a brown right eye and a green left eye. The real woman has a brown left eye and a green right eye. This is too suspicious. I wouldn't let her in. Amelia is a huge modern art enthusiast, and she wants to take her siblings to a new exhibition. 
A ticket for one person costs eighteen dollars. A ticket for two costs thirty, and a ticket for three costs forty-five. If she wants to pay as little as possible, should she invite her two siblings at once or go with each of them separately? It's cheaper if the three of them go together. It'll cost forty-five dollars. If Amelia went with each of them separately, she would have to pay thirty dollars twice, so she'd pay sixty dollars in total. Ellery has a sweet tooth, and every Friday she goes candy shopping for the week. Tonight she bought chocolate bars, jelly beans, and gummy bears. She has all chocolate bars but two, all packs of jelly beans but four. And all packs of gummy bears, but four. How many pieces of each type of sweets did she buy? Chocolate bars are all but two, which means that there are two packs of jelly beans and gummy bears together. So there's one pack of jelly beans and one pack of gummy bears. Chocolate and gummy bears are four together, so there are three chocolate bars. Alu is a fairy living in her magical forest. Every day, she takes the same route for a morning flight to the lake. One Friday, she was flying to the lake when she met some other creatures moving towards her. There were two elves, three fairies, and a gnome. How many creatures were going to the lake that Friday morning? Just Alu. Everyone else was going in the opposite direction. Lily and Della are twin sisters. Both girls failed their history test at school, and their mother made them study all weekend. In the middle of the day, Mrs. McAdams came to check on the girls. Take a look at Lily and Della. Which of them hasn't been studying? Della, the book she's reading isn't a history book. It's physics. She must have grabbed the closest book as soon as she heard her mother's footsteps. A rich lady was booking into one of the best hotels in the city. When she got her key, she noticed that her bags had been stolen. The police interrogated three main suspects. Mr. Collins said, "I wouldn't steal anything. I'm rich. I live in the penthouse on the twentieth floor." Mrs. Jones said. I've just returned to the hotel. I've been out all day, and Mrs. Smith said, "I wouldn't steal anything. I have too much stuff myself." Mr. Collins seems shady. He can't live on the twentieth floor because there are only eighteen floors in the hotel. Amber participated in a game show, and she won. She got three exclusive gifts: a Givenchy purse, Armani sunglasses, and a Porsche. But here's a catch: she is to pick her presents herself by choosing between the original and a replica. You need to help her pick the correct prize. Here are two Givenchy purses. One of them is the original, and the other is a replica. Which one should Amber choose? This one, it has the correct logo, so it must be the original. Now there are two seemingly identical pairs of sunglasses, but only one of them is the original from Giorgio Armani. Which one? This one with the correct logo, and finally the Porsche. Let's see if you remember their logo. Yes, this is the one. Great job. A hat and scarf cost one hundred ten dollars. The hat is one hundred dollars more expensive than the scarf. How much does the scarf cost?
$105. It means that the hat is $105, which is exactly $100 more than the scarf. Mia was a shop assistant on a giant cruise liner. Once, she found an expensive watch in the boutique where she worked and announced it on the radio. Soon, four people showed up in the store. Each of them claimed it was their watch. Mia looked at all of them attentively and realized who the watch belonged to. Can you figure it out too? This man does have a watch tan line, but it's much bigger than the watch Mia found. This young girl already has a watch on her left hand. Why would she wear the second one? Hmm. The elderly lady must be very absent-minded. Her dog is wearing her watch as a collar. The watch must belong to the teenager. <laughs> Nick was an experienced skydiver, but one day something went wrong. A strong gust of wind brought him to the forest. The man found himself among trees with no food or water. Soon, Nick saw four roads in front of him. One led to a supermassive black hole that swallowed everything that got close. The second road ended in a sea full of sharks. The third road led to a mountain that was impossible to climb over. And the fourth road ended in a bottomless abyss. Which road should Nick take? He should follow the third road. No one says he has to climb over the mountain. He can simply go around it. During which month do people sleep the least? During February, it only has 28, maximum 29 days. A man is on the run from the police after he stole three massive gold bars. 30 pounds each. Oh, no. At some point, he reaches a long bridge that can support only 260 pounds. The man weighs 200 pounds. How can he transport all three gold bars in one go? He has to walk across the bridge while juggling the bars. It means that at any time, only two bars will be on the bridge, since the third one will always be in the air. Look attentively at these three men carrying a log. One of them is cheating. Can you figure out who it is? It's the man in the middle. For one thing, he's wearing a suit, which is a strange choice of clothing for such a task. Plus, his face is quite relaxed, and his eyes are open. It doesn't look as if carrying the lug feels like hard work for him. One evening, Emma went to take out the trash from her coffee shop. She was about to leave when she spotted something dark in the corner behind the trash bins. It was a young woman, and she was unconscious. Emma rushed to her. The girl's bag and smartphone were lying nearby on the ground. The first person on the contact list was named Big Sis. Emma called the number and heard a female voice. I found your sister lying on the ground. It seems someone hit her on the head. What? The woman was shocked and promised to come immediately. Next, Emma called the police. The sister and police officers arrived at the same time. Arrest this woman. She's behind the attack. Oh. And Emma pointed at the sister. Why did she say so? She didn't tell the sister where to come. How did she know the address? Oh. There are four cups on the counter, all of them upturned and hiding the same number of sweets underneath. Near each of the cups, there is a sign that says how many sweets are under it. The signs are five or six, seven or eight, six or seven, and seven or five. Only one of these signs is correct. How many sweets are there under each cup? Since only one sign is correct, the right number can't appear twice. Otherwise, more than one sign will be correct. It means that there are eight sweets under each cup. Luke took part in a scientific experiment, but something went terribly wrong. He ended up in a place where there was nothing but three portals. One of them led to a polar desert in Antarctica. The second one opened into a volcanic crater filled with molten lava. 
And behind the third portal, there was the age of dinosaurs, with huge diplodocuses roaming around. Which portal should the man choose? Luke would freeze in no time in a polar desert. Molten lava isn't even an option. But diplodocuses are totally harmless to people. They only eat plants. Look at the picture attentively and say which of these people is left-handed. It's the waiter. It's easier for a left-handed person to hold the tray in the right hand and deal with the food and drinks with the left, dominant hand. Detective Henry Taylor was getting ready for work when he heard screams from his neighbor's house. He rushed there. The door was locked. The man had to kick it several times before it opened. He found his neighbor, Miss Anderson, in the living room. She was tied to a chair. Oh, I'm so happy you heard me shouting. An hour ago, a man knocked on my door and said he was an electrician. But as soon as I let him in, he tied me up and took all the priceless paintings I had got from my grandfather. And then he just ran away. Hmm. Detective Taylor had to arrest the woman for staging the theft. How did he know? When he tried to get into the house, the door was latched from the inside. Who could do it if Miss Anderson was tied up and the thief supposedly ran out of the house in a hurry? You have five pieces of chain, and each of them is made up of three links. You have to make a long chain out of these five pieces. Welding an open link will cost you $3, and breaking a link open is $1. Can you make a long chain if you have only $15? First, take one piece of chain and break all of its three links open. It'll cost you $3, then link the remaining four pieces of the chain with these open links. Welding these links will cost you another $9. In total, you'll only pay $12. In the middle of a long flight, two passengers stood up and started to threaten the crew and passengers. They demanded $1 million in a helicopter. One of the criminals had a pilot's license and could fly a copter. When the plane landed at the nearest airport, the passengers got everything they had requested. A case full of money and a helicopter. But when they got inside, they didn't manage to fly away and were captured by the police. Why couldn't they start the machine if the helicopter didn't have any technical problems? The helicopter was okay, but there was no fuel in its tank. Michael got lost when he was walking in the forest. After hours of wandering around, he finally saw a weird-looking house that seemed to be deserted. Still, the guy decided to try his luck and ask for directions. But when he entered the house, the door shut behind his back with a loud bang, and he heard a voice, You've entered my home uninvited. You won't leave it easily. Oh, no. After that, Michael found himself in a room with three doors. The voice told him that only one of those doors led to freedom. Behind the first door, there were starving wolves. The second door hid a furious werewolf. And behind the third door, there was a huge, raging campfire. Which door is safe? Michael should wait until the campfire goes out and get out of the house through the third door.